Welcome back to Atlanta Live. I'm Canton Jones. I'm sitting here with two of the most talented brothers that I know. Everybody, welcome to Atlanta Live. Mr. Lecrae and 1K Few. Thank you, fellas, Appreciate for you, having man. me here. Brother, now that you are doing what you do right now, mm -hmm. um, um, all the success that you've had, talk about the uncles and, 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 and I know they're proud of you, yeah. but how, how do they feel about, how, or, or does it affect their walk in any way? Do you have a chance to talk to them? Or, oh, yeah. Um, um, and what is that like? Yeah, um, so it's dope to me because it's the first time my uncle, he, he flying in from California for Christmas. This is the first time he's been in Atlanta. Wow. And, um, you know, he's been through a lot, of, a lot of stuff. You know, that, that lifestyle is fun for a minute, but it don't last. Right. So, you know, he was in and out of prison, and he had his own addiction issues. And so he's getting back on his feet. And mm -hmm. now it's kind of like the nephew taking care of Unc, mm -hmm. you know, instead of Unc taking care of nephew. So it's cool to, like, show him a different route and mm -hmm. in different ways. And also, you know, like he was telling me, he's like, man, when I was locked up, Cray, like, I was listening to the music, and he was like, man, like, you know, God been speaking to me. And so that's been cool to see just, like, that type of influence. And then when I go back to the neighborhood, it's like, you know, I see all of the OGs, the dudes I looked up to, they calling me OG. What's up, OG? Wow. And I'm like, what? That's crazy, because I didn't do half the stuff y'all did. But at the same time, they just appreciate what I've done and just, you know, putting on and, and, and moving forward. Wow. Yeah. All right, man. So we got a um, a collaboration of two brothers that I love and respect. Uh, the newbie, <laughs> one K Fuey, uh, and the legend Lecrae. Um, and this this uh, record that is that came out of something that you was getting ready to do, a mi another mixtape that you were getting ready to create. Mm -hmm. uh, and you had, I guess, a moment where you you were saying, wait a minute, you know, we, people don't wear church clothes anymore. Even for those people who go to church, they don't even wear church clothes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so what am I doing here? And um, you started to survey your office and certain people that you knew, and you came up with this different concept. Now talk about, uh, what you were doing and why pull 1k few into it yeah i was i was working on church clothes for and then i was trying to do another collaboration project and neither one of them well church clothes four i was working on but the collab project didn't work out so i was freed up mm -hmm. and um and then his manager uh flex reached out to me and was like hey you know would you be interested in doing a collab tape with few because this one you've been working on isn't panning out and I was like, I mean, yeah, I'll entertain it. You know, I really hadn't thought about it, but I was like, I'll entertain it. And um, what I, what really pushed me, like, what what got me to the edge was hearing his album. He had been working on his album, mm -hmm. and I heard the growth in him. Mm -hmm. You know, just like, wow, like you've grown as an artist, as a man, mm -hmm. like, man. So I was definitely interested in like, all right, let's let's talk further. And then what pushed me off the cliff was hearing the two records that he'd already worked on mm -hmm. for the tape. And it was like, you made it? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Did, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, no no church in a while. Um, a lot of people uh, are not going to church. Um, um, some of the music that you guys make, uh, you know, there are people that don't even go to church, don't, don't even know about Jesus, that vibe to this music. Um, talk, talk about uh, the sound well, well, one, I want to ask a question real quick. Is this considered a CHH record? Uh, is this, is this, uh, I know the, 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 it was, we rappers that's, yeah. that love Jesus and, mm -hmm. you know, that whole thing. So where <laughs> would this record, because this record got an edge to it, Craig. It got, it <laughs> yeah. got, it got a little thing to it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, and I love it. And so where does it fall? Uh, if you can kind of speak to that. Gospel rap is back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> For real, so, man. So but, it's a gospel rap album. I mean, but you know, gospel rap, CHA, we all same family at the end of the day. Like, but I would just say my roots is definitely gospel, you know, growing up in in the hood. Like going to church in the hood, going up black church. And um really just tapping into who I am for real, for real. Cause I didn't really find God until I didn't go to church in a while. You feel what I'm saying? Um, you know, I was forced to go to church and when I was coming up, of course. But I was just there, you know, going through the motions, you know, because my folks made me go, mm -hmm. really. 
and I'm going really just to see my cousins and, you know, get in all type of stuff, look at the girls and all that type of stuff. But I didn't really find God and get that relationship for myself until I left church and um, tried to find life on my own. You feel what I'm saying? Basically without God. And um, it's when I kept moving and um, I just realized I really can't move without God. Like, I had too many close calls. I feel like I was playing Russian roulette with my life. Like, I had a situation where I almost went to prison. I had a situation where I almost died, like, by being shot at. So I'm like, if I keep going any further, I know what's next. Like, I, I mean, I, I I was a little off, but I went, I had common sense for sure. Mm -hmm. So I just chose life, and um, I just went back to my roots, and just really start following my purpose and put relationship over religion. I ain't gonna lie, like ever since I put, you not know saying my purpose first, and and stop trying to put on for the street, stop trying to put on for the church. It's like everybody just start rocking with it, like. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's really about authenticity at the end of the day. I feel like this record, there's no church in the wild. It, it got too much authenticity on it, all through it. Like, we're not trying to put on for nobody. We're not trying to be safe. We ain't trying to walk on eggshells. Like, we just saying how we feel. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And that's just what it is. The real is back. Like, that's so what so it is. When, when you're talking about uh, um, safe, yeah. you know, uh, because Lecrae has major success. You you a newcomer in the game. You've had a lot of success as well. Mm -hmm. You talk about those safety zones about uh, preachers, pastors, yeah. uh, youth leaders that listen to this music and feels like it sounds a lot like uh, more mainstream. Exactly. What, what do you say to stuff like that? We are authentically from that, mm -hmm. from hip hop. Like we children of hip hop. You feel us? We're children of God first, of course. Mm -hmm. But we like we're children of the culture. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? And that's just gonna bleed out. Like it's authentic. Like we're not trying to sound like nothing. Mm -hmm. Like it just flows like that. Like mm -hmm. God gave us the sauce. Like that's nothing. I sat down in the pandemic and realized like. God really gave me the sauce. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? It's just up to me to be confident and walk in it. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I can't be out here trying to press people who think they know what my purpose is. Only I, me and God know my purpose. Mm -hmm. It's up to me to walk in and have confidence in it. So, so pulling from a, cause you, you pull from a more street sound, but traditionally uh, the CCM or the CHH sound is a little bit more uh, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so that support, do you feel like you're getting the same support? Uh, uh, and I want to ask this to, to, to Lecrae. Do you feel like you're getting the same support uh, that you've gotten in the past from other records, maybe even other artists, yeah. with this type of project? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> so if you look at my history, mm -hmm. you know, I was a kid, well, not a kid, I was a young man who got saved out of, the rap culture, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So so now all I know is this world. And then I get embraced by like, you know, mom and pop churches in the hood at first. Mm -hmm. There was the folks who had me coming and doing stuff, mostly for the youth, yep. which we gotta stop that because hip hop is for everybody. <laughs> for everybody, you know amen. I mean? <laughs> uh, but, but I'm doing the stuff for the youth groups in predominantly black churches. Of course, you know, just like in hip hop, um, our, our white brothers and sisters catch wind of it and say, ooh, we like this too. So then it was kind of like, hey, come over here and do some of this. So they had me collaborating on different CCM artist projects and stuff like that because, you know, I was the hot thing mm -hmm. at the time. And then I think it just caught fire in the CCM space. And so, you know, I think, um, I don't know why this is the way that it is, but in in music, if it's gospel, it typically means black. If it's Christian, right. it typically means white. Yes. I don't know why, who set that up or where the <clears> roots <throat> from that come from. But so when people think of Christian hip hop, they're thinking, oh, is this like connected to contemporary Christian music? Is it more for, for, for a white listener? When they say gospel rap or gospel hip hop, is it more for a black listener? But the truth of the matter is now we so blended mm -hmm. as, as rap artists. Mm -hmm. So we just... We just make it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm no longer really caring about trying to... This record wasn't about making a crossover record or a pop-sounding record. It was making record music that we just... Yeah. Was authentic to yeah. us, yeah. you know? So if you rock with it, you rock with it. Because I'm not saying it's for black people. Right. I'm saying that this is music that generally comes from the the black experience, mm -hmm. but if you rock with it, come on. Mm -hmm. We want you to come listen, because mm -hmm. so, I know y'all listening to everybody else. Right, 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 so, right, so, right. So come listen. So I love I love the support. So um, some of the singles, like, uh, uh, I like the movie record, because mm -hmm. I love the, the, the cartoon, too. Yeah. So I love, <laughs> I love the, uh, the sample. 
But talk about uh, um, it's the second record on the album. Uh, one call, a wild. The, the 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 one call. One call. When man, some of the stuff that you guys are saying, lyrically, y'all are crazy. Mm. And so these these songs put pictures that, way before you see the video. You got your own video that's playing. Mm -hmm. So kind of talk about uh, uh, one call and, and, and uh, specifically the heart behind that, the the artistry, the, some of the lyrics, some of the things that you're saying mm -hmm. in that, and who are you thinking about yeah. when you're doing that song specifically? I think I think the song you're talking about, um, No Church in the Wild, it's kind of like at the end, ain't it? No, it's song the number two. Oh, song number wow. two. Oh, Born Center. Born man. Center. That Born record. Center. That's my favorite. That hit favorite. That, that, hit that favorite. record right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, so that Born Center. Like, like I, was, I was like, man, I, I feel this record. Cause yeah. I, you know, just driving in, and I was like, I, I really, really feel this record. Yeah. And so, and, and I do feel like, you know, some certain certain records are, are me, mm -hmm. you know, like th this is a me record. This is mm -hmm. a, because I understand the experience and sometimes what you, where you're pulling from. Exactly. So when, when, when you're doing this record as an individual and you're, and you are, it, are there people in your life that you're saying, man, this record is for, I wish this person could hear this. Yeah. There, there are things that I've written that I that I came to tears to. You know, my mom is, is gone yeah. in heaven. I'd be like, man, I wish my mom could have heard this. Mm. And so it's like, uh, do you have a person in your life that you feel like, man, mm. I wish this person could hear it. Or I'm writing mm. this with this person in mind, especially on that one, uh, one call. But in any song that you want to mention, but that's the song that got me. Yeah. Mm. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm rapping to really me, like like not me, but it's like a million of me's out there. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They come from the same background, but they probably nine times out of ten, they not in the church. Like, you know, they listen to Lil Baby, they listen, they in the street, you know, they ain't really saved all the way. So when I rap and when I speak, like I wanna talk to them on some like, nah, bro, I get you. I feel you. Mm -hmm. Like I feel you, I'm coming from the same place. And if God can do this for me, he can do that for you. Hmm type thing and I, I just wanted to tell that from an authentic way though you feel what I'm saying because everything I say is not capped like I that's how it came up you feel what I'm saying and Craig will always tell me like, I do a great job at painting the picture but I just had to get better at really tying the story together mm -hmm. and I feel like with this project that what I really tapped into like really just telling the story and tying everything together and um just making everything make sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of the programs that I read about in your bio um specifically is a contest that you're doing uh the first hip hop contest yeah uh partnership with j pay mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and the specifics of you actually giving an opportunity to people who are locked up yeah um one i think that's amazing and very creative uh i want to know how y'all gonna pull that off how you gonna get a studio in the jail yeah. but uh <clears throat> but um talk about your heart and i know you talked about your uncle mm -hmm. and 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 you got other people that influence this type of move but uh maybe you want to explain a little bit more what it's about and yeah. um and your heart behind it yeah basically um you know <clears throat> I, the only way i communicate with my uh loved ones in who are incarcerated is through jpay right so it's how they get music or write letters and do stuff like that um and so they can listen to music on there as well in the system so we put out restoration um, we were trying to figure out how to put out that album in the prison system first, hmm. you know So before the album hit the streets we wanted it to be in the prison. So first should be last last should be first yeah. So let them get it first. So we figured out how to do that um, yeah. And then you know that brought on the conversation of doing this contest where we produce a song a contest where a song is Produced uh, they get to rap on it. The tracks provided by Zaytoven. Yeah, and basically what ended up happening was we had 500 submissions <clears throat> and out of those 500 uh morris brown the music department of morris brown went through the 500 chose the top 25 and then out of the top 25 i chose a winner and then we fly out to the prison to record the winner on the track uh coming up in the new year and so um so it's just an amazing opportunity because you know every time i go to prison to visit <laughs> Every yeah. time I go to prison, I always run into crazy talent. You mm -hmm. know, just like, man, this person is so talented. And the world don't get exposed to that incredible mm -hmm. talent. So this is just an opportunity to help them 
get people get exposed to the talent behind those walls because there's so much people don't realize like how much talent is behind those walls so it was one opportunity to do that and then two it's just to to show love to them to them folks man. yeah it's just like man you 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 feel forgotten so how can we make yeah. sure you feel remembered and and take care so of did they did they send lyrics they sent <clears throat> lyrics so they would send their lyrics, the lyrics. Okay. yeah they had to write their lyrics out and um and we would just that was the hard part because you trying to catch the swag right and the bars at the same time some people got bars but they ain't got no you know what mm -hmm. I mean so we it was a hard part but we but we narrowed it down and um and I think we we got a winner mm, good hard. man so you you're going you're taking a a studio taking the studio to the prison we got approved to to to, to take the mobile system up there and let them record that is That's hard. that is amazing yeah. man. Good man. So, one <clears throat> K few. Yes, Sersky. All right, this record. Um, you're with the Grammy winning. Um, uh, this man has a, a one. I'm a, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. I've been a fan of, of Lecrae for a long time, and mm -hmm. a fan of you. Uh, tell me about um, with all the success of the other artists. You're mm -hmm. the you're the next one up and coming. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you feel any pressure? For sure. Okay, so you do feel pressure. Tell me where that pressure is coming from. But it, it's good pressure though, like. It's that kind of it's that kind of pressure like right before you go on stage. It's kind of like yeah, butterflies, butterflies, like butterflies. you know what I'm saying? It's like it's excited. really it's more exciting. Mm -hmm. And but I do know it comes with respons with great power. What that boy Spider Man say come with great responsibility. <laughs> so <laughs> I just cool. had Spider Man. What? Yeah, that's what's up. I'm telling you. And I just got to really realize that and not take this for granted and really take everything, bro, been putting into me and really living by that you feel what i'm saying it's like we have bible study every tuesday and it's gonna be folks there's room for you and it's definitely gonna be some folks room for your downfall so i mean you just gotta have that tunnel vision with god and that's really what i got like i man since before i've been starting like on family men everybody like i've been having all type of people saying me i can't do it you know mm. what i'm saying and, and and just all type of doubters all type of stuff but i ain't gonna lie like through that whole journey like i just really just kept my faith in god and not man you feel what I'm saying? Command really gonna fail you every time. I really had to learn that the hard way too. And um when I just really just decided to really keep my faith in God, it really on some like cocky stuff though, almost like cause like it's when confident. you got when it you got it. God, boy, can't nobody really tell you yeah. man. You feel what I'm saying? But I just really just had to follow God for real. Good. Yeah. Good. So look look Ray, from from the first church clothes when you was talking about church like literal church clothes, to now these are your church clothes. For sure. Um, you've seen the change of the culture. You've seen the change in the, the acceptance of mm -hmm. what we do or what of what you do. Um, tell me, tell me what's different if you could compare the first church clothes to what you're doing now in Church in the Wild. No Church in the Wild. I think the first church clothes was like really communicating. Look. We belong here like everybody else does. When you say we, we like us young Christians mm -hmm. who don't understand when to shout, when to stand up, when to say amen, or don't wear the, you know, we got the J's on. Like, mm -hmm. we belong here like everybody else does. And that was kind of the church clothes mantra. But at the same time, also saying, hey, yo, what's up, hip hop? Yeah, I love the Lord. And I'm a part of y'all too. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like feeling like neither side would embrace me you know uh the the stepchild in the church and in the streets mm -hmm. that's kind of how i felt and today i feel like you know i'm appreciated everywhere i may be celebrated nowhere but i'm appreciated everywhere mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what i mean and so really no church in the wild is just saying well look i'm no longer worrying about trying to get the church or the streets to embrace me it's a whole bunch of people behind me who don't feel embraced and I want them to feel embraced. Like, mm. look, if don't nobody accept you, we do. You know, come on in and, and we want to embrace you, you know. Do you do you run into kids uh, or, or people that, uh, you know, when you're on the road, that's in this gray area, not accepted, um, you know, by the church or the streets, they're just in this, in this gray area. And, uh, and 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 so and how do you respond to them and and what do you tell them? Yeah, I I my thing is like, I just want to be a bridge. And some people live, like in between those spaces. Like you know, you're not the toughest kid. You know, you don't need to be out there in the streets, running the streets and doing. A, no, none of us do. Right. But you really know better. <laughs> right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Like, stop it. And then I understand you. You don't really connect to 
grandma and and, and granny and, and uncle them and on Sunday morning either. Like I understand you're trying to figure out how do you walk your walk out. And so we need those representatives for people to see like now that's because that's how I ended up really starting on my walk with the Lord. I ran to a group of individuals who look like me, they talk like me, they dress like me. I said, y'all Christian, y'all can't be Christian. Well, if y'all Christian, maybe I could be, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, the, the picture that was getting painted. And so I think that's really what we've been seeing is um, is just a different version. I mean, you were part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of your legacy. Mm -hmm. Nobody was doing it and before you did it, yeah. you know. So it was like we didn't know what a singing you know, you was like the the T Pain of <laughs> just did it all. The singing and, rapping. And I, and I was basically doing what y'all are doing. Like doing what I just did what I felt. Exactly. You know, and, yeah. and, and the worship music that I didn't feel, I just feel like I had to make it exactly. for myself so exactly. I could worship God. And so exactly. and I think I think I think, man, you guys have uh have built something huge and I feel like people uh I, I feel like like you the new bishop, bro. I, I don't know how to say it, but but for those people, because church is is not gonna take place like we know it. Mm. Uh, like internet is the church. Like yeah. you, you know, you can get on your IG and and and, and feed people through yeah, the word. Exactly. So it's it's everything is different. Yeah. Um. Um. The pressure to be Lecrae. Mm -hmm. Here, here, here's my here, here's the the <laughs> the pressure. Yeah. To be Lecrae, who's had major success, um, you, you're a family man, um, you're a businessman, you, mm -hmm. you, you, a lot of people don't know that you co -own, well, a lot of people may, may know, but you're the co-owner of this label. Mm -hmm. um, the pressure to consistently uh, redo Lecrae, you're talking about close to 20 years or something. 16, 17. 16, 17 years, and you're still relevant to rap and to be on this record. Talk about that journey and, and what do you have, the things that you have to juggle. I, I heard some stories about people, you know, you say one thing, man, and everybody mm -hmm. just go crazy about your opinion on certain things. Or, or, or maybe you didn't say something, but you came to a place and they were like, oh, you stand with him, you know. Right, so, talk, right, right. so talk about the pressure of being Lecrae. A wise man told me one time, he asked me a question, he said, you play football? I said, no. He said, you a pro basketball player? I said, no. He said, that's right. This is what you do. This is what you do. And it gave me a boost of confidence. Like, this is what I do. That person was you, by the way. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget that as long as I live. And I tell people the same thing all the time. But this is just what I was built for. You know, it's kind of like leaders, if you call shots, you're going to take shots. Mm. That's just what comes with it. Mm. Um, Consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. You know the testament of your faith is building endurance. It's it's endurance being built yeah. by going through a lot of these particular things. Yeah, some of it has been terrible, hmm. but I'm still here, you know? And so um, I've taken some stances that people didn't like, but I had to, you know, I'm a human being mm -hmm. who's processing and, and growing and figuring stuff out. Um, I've been a, the victim of... Uh, not recognizing what was happening in the moment you know it's like oh i didn't even know what was going on and it's like you did know I did, well okay cool you got to move on and mm -hmm. move forward but at the end of the day what gives me the confidence to keep moving is i know i can't mess up god's plan amen and, the, and you can't stop god's plan so mm -hmm. I, as long as i stay following his will ain't nothing anybody can do to stop his plans for me wow yeah wow wow uh, talk about protect the bag. So you're you um uh, <clears throat> you're probably one of few millionaire gospel rappers that, that, that that's how he, you know what I'm saying. Uh, and a lot of times people make uh, even uh, mainstream rappers get a level of success, but nobody comes around to help them maintain mm -hmm. that success. And you have a uh, a program called Protect the Bag, and we gon' we gonna be on him about protecting that bag. He, got, he got his whole family's life saving on that neck. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm messing up. I was gonna ask him. I was like, hey, I had to sneak and get this, no cap. I had to sneak and get it. I, he wasn't gonna let me get that in the middle. That's you got. We had some conversations. It's okay. We, we was in the jewelry store, literally having conversations. Please. That's all right. That's all right. I know. I know when you're young, you you gotta, yeah. at least got to get it. Oh no, I gotta but, get in there. So how, so how do you uh, talk about? You know, protecting the bag uh, and, and and give 
uh, those gems to those people who m may have some type of success but need to sustain it. Yeah, the biggest thing I, I think for us to realize is that, um, you know, money is not something you consume. Money is something that you turn into capital. You shouldn't be working for money. Money should be working for you. Yes. And if you don't understand that, then you got to keep, you know, educating yourself until that becomes a reality. So for me, I just wanted to educate me. I remember being a kid watching Friday, the movie Friday. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I love Ice Cube. And he, and he, I love all his characters. I love him in all his movies. I love him as a rapper. But I thought about it and I said, this man made all these movies and made all these records. And he, I'm more in love with the character than the actual man behind the stuff who knows how to make movies, who knows how to produce stuff. And I thought to myself, man, I've learned everything about Ice Cube except how to do what he's doing. Hmm. And so that that changed my mindset and made me say, I want to teach people how to do this, you mm -hmm. know, instead of just being excited about the character, being excited about the person on the screen wearing a jewelry. How did they get that jewelry? Mm -hmm. You know, break the game down, break break what this looks like. And so what Protect the Bag is, Protect the Bag is protecting your money, protecting your income. So what I did was I created a series on YouTube um, that runs every week, you know, six week series that explains to people the basic way of protecting your money, making your money, investing your money, budgeting your money. And uh, we do it in a fun way. It's skits, it's videos. It's kind of like if you was watching Dave Chappelle's show or Living Color or something like that. Like, so <laughs> All right. So you bored while you're watching it. Y'all went there with it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, you have a passion in, um, for the west side of Atlanta. Yeah. Um, a lot of... Uh, no shade to the east side. East side. Uh, east side. Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there are uh, projects that I, I've recently learned that you're doing. Um, one one is the, uh, the school that you built. Mm. Um, and um, my mom is an educator, uh, was an educator. She's in heaven. Um, and she was real big on education. Mm -hmm. And so talk about uh, putting a school in that particular part of the neighborhood and why was that important? Well, what's funny is that I had a passion for tough communities, you know, communities that was marginalized and not getting the resources that they needed mm -hmm. because I spent three years in North Memphis and being Hampton, which is one of the most gully communities you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. It's like, boy. And so I was just tired of what I saw and wanted to see stuff change from the ground up. And a friend of mine, Benjamin Wills, had a vision for a school and he was like, you know, he's like, yo, come walk with me. I'm to show you where a school should be built. I'm walking around, it looked like Beirut. If there's a there's a show called Snow on the Bluff, this is literally where the bluff is. Hmm. He wanted a school here. It ain't been a school there in 25 years. You couldn't even buy milk because there were no grocery stores there. You know, you could buy more heroin than you could buy groceries in this hmm. neighborhood, you hmm. know? So I was like, Ben, are you sure this is where the school is? And he was like, absolutely. And I was like, let's do it, you know, run it up. And so uh, that began the process of you know, putting the money in and getting the school started, campaigning, getting supporters. And now, you know, uh, we're going on, on um, what, seven years of a school being there, mm. you know, and it's just grown every year from kindergarten. And now them kindergartners is, you know, uh, sixth graders, you know wow. what I mean, which is crazy to see. You good, know? good, so, man. Yeah. One K few. Yes, sir. Wait, we're about to wrap this up in a little. Um, <clears throat> I want you to dream. You, you, you've been around major success. You're around major success every day. Um, and uh, I, w I want you to talk from a place of the future, of where you see yourself um, and, and, you know, your, your, your records, your, your career, maybe even your family. Uh, because this is what we don't allow young people, especially in church, you mm -hmm. know, in church circles, that we they always consume the information we want you to listen yeah but we don't let you talk about what you want to do and what you want to be yeah and so i want to i want to i want to take this opportunity to listen and for the world to listen to what's going to come out of this yeah man i just accepted um just for responsibility on just taking leadership but just on how, what it's supposed to look like on what a millennial who love god who still pop your flavor who still don't put on for the church, don't put on for the street when what it's supposed to look like. I feel like our generation is it's about, you gotta give them an example. You're like, these drug dealers, nah, these folks, they put up to the hood, they, they they cashing out, they got they got the foreign whips, they got the money, they got everything, they showing these folks. So I just feel like it's time to show these folks like what it really looks like. 
You know what I'm saying? Not just talk about it, because, I mean, we do a great job of talking about it. But, I mean, we now it's time to get in these folk face, stand on the tables, you know what I'm saying, about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Stand on these couches about Jesus. Like, we can't be scared. Like, it, it's warfare out here for real. So it's like, it's now it's time for God's soldiers to step out. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So I, that's what I see in the future, real army, showing people what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we've been talking about it for years, but now it's time to, you know what I'm saying? It's time to march now. Yeah. So, All right. And building a legacy. Go sure. ahead. Talk about the legacy. Oh, yeah. I mean, just for my, my, my kids, my children, um, my, even my wife, like just my family, like just really, like I said, being the leader. You feel what I'm saying? And it just start with me. And, uh, you know, my 1K family brothers, like they even growing, you know. And I mean, you just never know like who you would like to. It's like you never know. It can be the smallest light. It can be the biggest light. You never know who you would like to. And I just want my legacy to just be, man, just being authentic, being 1,000, being who God calls you to be. I'm saying 1K few being 1,000. Like, I ain't putting on for no man, like nobody. Yeah, you've done you've done movies already for sure. Yeah, for sure, yeah. hey man, Christmas so, spirit right now. <laughs> hey, get that, man. Let's get it. Man. I mean, man, and and so so proud of the uh, your process, man, and what you're doing. And you know we're gonna we're gonna keep your feet to the fire. You sure. know, you I'm know, I call, I call you. I got giants around me right now, man. Y'all see this? Somebody take a picture. <laughs>